the best MMA fighter in the world. Nobody touches you pound for pound. And you say, when I get home, my father's gonna smash me? You know why? Because the man was in awe of his father. Values. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, Mawlana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man sabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen wa ba'd. Brothers, elders, sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, social media has this amazing, amazing ability to bring things to life, set things ablaze. And subhanAllah, since last week, since the fight, it's amazing. You know, people have been talking about this issue and really many, many things actually have kind of come to the fore. You know, brothers who I actually thought were pacifists, you know, who had nothing to do with kind of fighting or the UFC, were actually sending messages on WhatsApp, on Facebook regarding the fight. And it made me actually think about a couple of things. A couple of things actually were brought to light, which were really interesting. Certain questions I was asked. For instance, is UFC tournaments halal? One brother actually sent me a text message and he said, Sheikh, I have never seen the Ummah united behind one person like Khabib. I said, SubhanAllah. Others were saying, what? Why are people so fixated on this person? It's not like if he fought the Battle of Badr, you know, he's getting a purse of two million dollars. Another brother, a brother I actually personally know, he had a dream two days before that Khabib was mauling Connor and exactly how the fight took place. So one of the other brothers said sarcastically, he said, why didn't you tell us? We could have gone to Paddy Power and put down a wager. Really, not, might not be a good idea, but Paddy currently doesn't have too much power. But these are certain, you know, thoughts which were going through people's minds. And truthfully, rightly, in all honesty, this is not like some people would like to make it a conflict between Haq and Batil. You know, you had Haq on this side, you had Batil on this side. This is not the day of Badr. But there are certain things that we can actually learn from this and we can take home. And the most important is values. See, where do our values come? Where do Muslim values come from? Muslim values come from the teaching of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding him, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا in the message of Allah, there is a sublime character. These are beautiful values, beautiful principles. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qul, say, O oh say, O oh message of Allah, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, fattabi'uni. If you love Allah, then follow me, follow my precepts. So the only way that you can get close to Allah is to have the values, the principles, the morals, the adab of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know, values is something that we in Britain and in the West hear often. We often hear, oh, British values, these are British values. And sometimes you also hear and you actually see that the Islamic values are actually at variance at times with the values within the wider society. So, but our value, the value of the believers come from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one very, very important value is controlling one's tongue. You know, when we went to school, if you were bullied, if somebody said something nasty about you, you would go to the teacher and the teacher would tell you one thing. She would say, or he would say, sticks and stones break my bones, but names won't hurt me. And really, this was a common phrase. This was a value which was instilled in us when we were children. It's true. You don't want to be too thin-skinned because life becomes very difficult. But sticks and stones do break your bones, but names also hurt. Names break reputations. Names break people's hearts. And this is why the Messenger of Allah said in the hadith, 
المسلم من سلم المسلمون من لسانه ويده a Muslim is he who other Muslim in some narrations is a nas a true Muslim is he who other people are safeguarded from his lisan wa yad it's very interesting the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what? he said lisan, tongue first and then he said hand why? because the damage of the tongue is greater than the damage of the hand you have a happy family and you spread one false rumor about the husband, about the wife, and all the happiness is thrown out of the window. All the happiness is lost. You have a brother, a sister, chaste. Never indulge in a relationship outside marriage. One rumor about the sister, false rumor, even true rumor. Her entire future may be finished why? Because this lady had honor and you destroyed her honor. So the damage of the tongue is actually worse than the damage of the hand. In Islamic law, if you say regarding somebody that you committed zina, so you had a, a relationship outside marriage, and you can't prove it, you know what your punishment will be? 80 lashes. Why? Because you have destroyed the honor or you have endeavored to destroy the honor of another individual. Now, this value, this principle, may sound absurd when you live in a society where premarital sex is a norm. But see, you have to have values. You have to have honor. If you don't have any values, if you don't have honor, then it means nothing to you. And what really was interesting about this kind of conflict and this fight was it brought to the fore two values which are the most valuable and the most dearest to the Muslims. It brought into the equation faith, firstly, and secondly, your parents. Islamically, there is no values which are more important than faith your belief in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then secondly your parents and these were two things which were violated in this conflict <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when speaking about the parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah prescribes Allah orders that you only worship him and you are good to your parents then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He said, if one of your two parents grow old with you, or both of them grow old with you, meaning under your care, do not even say off to them. Do not rebuke them. And say to them noble words. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, he said, lower your wings out of humility, of humility, out of rahmah, out of mercy for them, and make a dua for them. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents like they had mercy upon me whilst I was a child. Look at this verse. Allah says, worship me alone, one verse. Then Allah goes, be good to your parents. If they become old, do not even say off to them. Do not rebuke them. Say to them noble words. Be humble in front of your parents and make dua for them. One verse regarding himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and six commandments regarding your parents. Because this is a maqam that parents have in the deen. So when Connor said regarding his father that your father was a traitor. Rightly so, Khabib was upset. And you should be upset. Because Imam Shafi rahimahullah said, only a donkey doesn't get upset. When you see injustices, when you see wrongs, you should feel upset. That's your ghayra, that's your izza. When Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu said to Bilal, Ya Ibn Saudar, oh you son of a black woman, 
he went to the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he complained to the message of Allah. And the message of Allah didn't say to Bilal, Bilal, in all honesty, you are black. <coughs> Your mother is black. What's the issue? What he said is not a lie. The message of Allah didn't say that because he understood what Abu Dhar meant. He was insulting the dearest person to him after the message of Allah. He was insulting his mother. So he called Abu Dhar and he said, Abu Dhar, come here. He said, Abu Dhar, you're a man who has jahiliyyah in you. Jahiliyyah is those traits which have nothing to do with Islam. Those which occurred before Islam. The message of Allah sallallahu said to the Sahaba, they said, you know Ikrama, his father was Abu Jahl and we know what the message of Allah said about Abu Jahl. He said he was the Fir'aun of this Ummah. He was the Fir'aun of this Ummah. But the Prophet sallallahu said, he said to the Sahaba, he said, don't, don't mention his father in an evil manner in front of Ikrama. Ikrama was a Muslim, his father was the Fir'aun of this Ummah. But the Prophet sallallahu didn't want to hurt him and harm him through his father. So when he was insulted through his father, he had the right to be angry. This is Ghayla. This is Ghayla. The most precious people to you in this dunya are your parents. And wallahi, hat off. This, this is about values. This entire talk is about value. Hat off to the man. I'll tell you why. In front of millions of people, in front of many millions of people who are watching this, what did he say? You know, you're the baddest UFC fighter pound for pound in the world. The best MMA fighter in the world. Nobody touches you pound for pound. And you say, when I get home, my father's gonna smash me? You know why? Because the man was in awe of his father. Values. We reached the age of 16. Oh, dad, you know, I can handle myself. You know, I'm a man now. Leave me to it. This was a man. Why, you understand? Why he was a man? Because he understood the Islamic teaching. Respect your parents. Have honor for your parents. And because of his love for his father, and look, look at what his father could say to him. He could say in front of the entire dunya, his father could say to him that I am gonna treat him worse and my punishment will be worse than what the UFC will give him. You know, our father says a couple of words to us in front of our friends and we feel really embarrassed. We can't show our face again. You know why? Values. It's values. If you have value for your father, if you have value for your parents, then you will honor them. And let me tell you, if you have no value, if you have no values, then you yourself have no value. If you have no value, then you yourself have no value. The second issue, what was it? Religion. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in the dina in the al-Islam. <coughs> that the only religion in the eyes of Allah is al-Islam. There is no other salvific part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides Islam. The salaf would say, Alhamdulillahi ala ni'matil Islam wa kafa biha ni'mah. All praise be to Allah on the favor of Islam. And if this was the only favor that Allah gave us, nothing else, nothing from the dunya, nothing, it would have sufficed. You saw the religion being thrown into the mix. You saw when Connor offered him the whiskey. What did he say to him? Really interesting. What did he say to him? He said to him, here's the whiskey, have a drink. He said, I don't drink. He said, why not? What was he saying? He was probing. He knew why he doesn't drink. He was probing. He wanted him to say, oh, my religion doesn't allow it. He didn't say that, but he already had his answer ready. What did he call him? He called him a backward so-and-so. See, what does that mean? It's, now Islam become, comes into the equation. Because as a Muslim, you don't drink your backwards. See, when Donald, Trump, when Donald Trump don't drink, it's actually a positive in his record. 
When a Muslim doesn't drink, oh, this is related to his backwardness. He must be backward. And this slander, this slur, this insult is not restricted just to Khabib. He slandered and insulted nearly two billion individuals who don't drink. That you're backwards because you don't drink. That your religion is backwards because you don't drink. And see, this is really interesting. Again, it comes to values. Why? Because see, when the guy gave him Khabib Salam, Salam alaikum Khabib, and then he congratulated Connor on his whiskey, let's ask ourselves 99% of us would have remained quiet. We wouldn't have said a word. Why say it? No skin on my back. What did he say? He said, You can't give Salam and then give him congratulations on the whiskey. And this is what youngsters go through day in, day out. <laughs> you stand there with your parents and you're 20. You haven't broken your virginity. You don't drink, you must be backwards. Here you got a man who didn't have to say anything. When you're a celebrity, generally this is the case, you don't bother saying anything. But he, he spoke because he believed. And this is principles and this is values. You know, people ask me, he says, Sheikh, were you happy when uh, Khabib won? I said, yes, I was happy. They said, but it's a blood sport, Sheikh. I said, I know it's a blood sport, but did you want me to be happy? I can't won. In the time of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Romans and the Persians had a war. The Romans were Christian and the Persians were Zoroastrians. The Persians won and the Mushrikeen got happy. Because these were, they were idol worshippers and they worshipped fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lamin, Wulibat Rum. The Byzantines, the Romans have been defeated. And then Allah says, later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, But a time will come that the, that the Christians, that the Byzantines will defeat the Persians. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he mentioned this, Yawma idhin yafrahu al-mu'minun bin nasrillah On that day, the believers would become happy that the Christians are one. The Christians weren't doing jihad. The Christians didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These were two disbelieving armies fighting each other. But the Muslims were happy because these were people of the kitab. They were closer. So I was actually happy because this fight was a bit more than just two people. This was a brother fighting and this was an Islamophobe fighting. Do I, do I agree with the fact that he jumped the cage? Not necessarily. I actually think that as a professional, you know, he should have said, he should have stayed composed. But can I understand? As a believer, I can. You know why? Because it's about values. The adrenaline is pumping. He's insulted your father. He's insulted your religion. And although you shouldn't have done it because it could have impacted a lot of innocent people, but to a degree I can understand because I hold those values. I'll tell you something which would really hurt me, and I think it hurt all the Muslims, and that is if after the fight, Khabib had gone up to McGregor and shook his hand. Now you might be thinking, well, what do you mean, Sheikh? Don't we have so many narrations where the Prophet Sallallahu forgave? People transgressed, people, you know, abused him, but the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu forgave them? Yes, we do. But that's when it's limited to the person. If he had done that, he would have normalized slandering Muslims and getting away with it. Slandering your father and getting away with it. See, the asul is this. If somebody transgresses your personal rights, and you forgive them, alhamdulillah, something good. But if the implications are wider, then it's not actually even permitted. Why? Because you then normalize people calling Muslims backwards and you say, oh, it's only outside the ring. In the ring, it's quashed, it's done, and it's dusted. Now, if he had actually done that, that would have really, really upset him.
By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did it because he understood the wider implications of that action. Now, do I now say that MMA is committed, is jais, by no stretch of the imagination? Is MMA committed? But, did anybody ever say that boxing is jais because Muhammad Ali boxed? Nobody said that. Why? Because Muhammad Ali was bigger than boxing. This was a man when he passed away, everybody went for a janazah. They were all the ulama wanted to carry his janazah. He was a boxer, but he was bigger than boxing. He was, he was bigger than boxing. In the time when it was not fashionable to be proud of the fact that you're black, he stood up and he was proud that he was black. In a time when it was not fashionable to be Muslim, he was a Muslim and he was proud of the fact that he was a Muslim. When they told him principal values, when they told him they took away his title, they nearly jailed him, he went into bankruptcy, all this. But the man, the man still remained firm because the man had values. And this is the same I believe about Khabib, to a degree, in a time where it's not fashionable to be to be Muslim, yeah, where you know Muslims are hide their identity, where Islamic organizations will hide their identity. Oh, peace, oh Islam. Uh, I've seen Islamic organizations have you know uh, events where they've got a rabbi, they've got a Christian Islamic organizations, but they don't have Islamic scholar. Some, uh, some of the fatwas that the ulama give, wallah, he make you cringe because they make you feel like set can class citizens. And you have this guy, you have this guy who will come on stage and say, Alhamdulillah. He will say, Inshallah. He will say, Mashallah. He does so much dhikr at his press conferences. I think I'm sitting in a Sufi halaqa. But why? because he's proud. And you know what that does? It imbues in many people pride of their religion. In a time where people are not proud to be Muslim, in a time where people hide their identity, you have here a young man who doesn't need to do it. He doesn't need to do it, but he does it. And really, this is a lesson for us brothers and sisters, <coughs> that we should be proud of our deen. There is no greater ni'mah than the ni'mah of this deen. There is no greater ni'mah. Principle. You saw his Instagram you know, message yesterday. He's ready to give his title in. He's ready to give their two, keep your two million dollars. Who would say that two million? Keep your two million dollars. Nobody would really say that. But he's doing it because on principle. And therefore, I, 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 I in no way say, oh, Habib is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No way. You know, he's come under a lot of criticism. He's meeting with Putin. Now, the truth is, I don't know what was said in that meeting. Yeah, we know that Connor brought it up. He lives in Russia. Maybe, maybe he said something to him. Maybe he said something of benefic benefit to him. Allah knows. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what he said to him. And therefore, as a believer, I give my Muslim brother the benefit of the doubt. I give him the benefit of the doubt. So, in no way do I say that this guy is a wali of Allah. I'm not telling you now take your thick rulings of Khabib. But what I'm saying is that this issue of values is greater than the octagon. And if you just keep it to the octagon, if you believe that this fight between him and Connor was only limited to the octagon, then you missed the point. We can take many values from this, especially in the West. <laughs> you know, be proud of your deen. You have this person, you know, around about six months ago, he actually shared one of my talks, a small part of my talk which is dubbed in Russian. 
And wallahi, when I heard this, that somebody sent it to me that he shared one of your talks, I was shocked. And I'll tell you why I was shocked. Because I can guarantee you that 80% of Muslims in this country or in the West would never share that. It was the discussion between Abdullah ibn Zubair and his mother. At that time, he had 3 million followers, vast majority, most likely non-Muslims, and he shared it. You know why he shared it? Because he was probably a believer. That talk is one of the emotional, most emotional talk there is. His mother says to him, he says, oh mother, I'm scared. When I die, she said, fight, fight like a man. And he said, what, well, when I die, they might be decapitated. You know what, you know what she said to him? She said, oh my son, a slaughtered sheep doesn't feel the pain when it's skinned. And when he meets her, he's got his armor on. And she says, why are you wearing the armor? For those who desire what you desire, don't wear this. Take it off. And he said, oh mother, I only did it to console you. He shared this video. I ask you, how many Muslims here would actually share that video? How many Muslims in the West would share that video? Now why? And, and, and this is where we need to you know, regain. We need to regain our confidence as belief. Our values are our values. Our parents and our deen are the most important things to us. Our community, our brotherhood. Look at the man's loyalty. For his brother, he's ready for his brother. He doesn't need to do it for his brother. And not his brother, blood brother, his brother in the deen. He's ready to give, throw him his title. He's ready to give his purse, two million pound purse. Basically on principle. And brothers and sisters, you know, as believers, we are meant to be people of principle. So again, I reiterate the statement. I am no way making Jai's MMA. I am not saying that this man is a Wali of Allah SWT. Allah, Allah, only Allah knows who the Walis are. And I finish off with the statement of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Where Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Only trust in those who are dead. If you want to follow the son of anybody, if you want, really want to trust in anybody, trust in those who are dead because they are the only people saved from Pitra. Don't trust in me. Don't trust in any scholar because tomorrow they can fall into fitna. Don't trust in the Khabib, but what we see today, we can take benefit from it. We take the good, we leave the bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us ummah strong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of principle, make us people of value. Because if you have no values, if you have no integrity, wallahi, in the eyes of people, you have no respect. Barakallahu feekum, barakallahu khayr, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.